1964, one night when, uh, after work, there was a woman going home, 3 a.m., she was working in a bar, and uh, she got home. On the way, uh, she was attacked by a person. The attack continued for a long time. There were people awake at that time, and later, police investigations established that at least 37 people witnessed that moment. How many of them intervened and saved her? Take a guess. None. Okay. 37 people actually witnessed this murder taking place. Nobody intervened. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, we've heard already from some of the earlier speakers, when you see an evil, you have to act. You have to practically change that evil. It's only if you don't have ability, then you speak with your tongue. If you don't have ability to do that, then hate it in your heart. And that's the weakest of iman. In the story of the people of the Sabbath, they were commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to do the, 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 the fishing. And uh, they tried to circumvent the laws. And as you know, Allah's curse befell them. One group of people said, tried to stand up and stop those people from doing wrong. Another group stood up and tried to stop those people from stopping the wrongdoers. They were saying, look, these people are going to be punished anyway. Why are you telling them to stop? And they replied, as you know in the Quran, uh, Two reasons. We're speaking now so that, inshallah, on the day of judgment, we will be excused in front of Allah. We couldn't physically stop them, but we had to at least speak out. You know, stand up for our ethics and the moral position and make that clear. And secondly, maybe some will be swayed, some will be influenced. That's up to Allah if He wants to change their hearts. But let us speak, let us uphold morality ethics and do the right thing what is it that stops people from taking action what's the number one reason what what comes to mind fear, fear. does anybody have any other reasons why why, why do why do people not act busy i'm going to just take these two things yeah in the in the uh, example of the lady that i gave kitty genovese there were psychological studies also done to try and understand 37 people witnessed, but they did nothing. And other studies thereafter, there's a famous study of the Stanford prison, prison uh, experiment, you can look it up. And several have established that, why is it that people don't actually take action? And it's these two reasons. Number one is they're afraid of the consequences that if I was to intervene, that attacker may attack me. He may see where I live or may do something. They'll come up with all sorts of reasons why they shouldn't act. Secondly, is what they call the bystander effect. Now, there's a lot of other people. Surely someone else is going to do it. Why, why should I? So what we need to do is to cure these two problems. If we're going to make any change. I don't have a grand plan and solution, but I've got a couple of things that we can do. And it begins with curing these two issues. One is fear, and the other one is the bystander effect. And the antidote to fear is something called courage. That's the medicine. That's what's going to cure um, fear. We have hundreds of types of fears. How many of them were we born with? Again, there's studies that have been done into this, believe it or not. How many of these fears, the fear of flying, the fear of darkness, the fear of spiders, the fear of losing our wealth, the fear of being attacked, I mean, how many of them were we born with? Does anybody know? We, we were born with some, actually. Two. What, what are they? Perfect. We were born with fears, and, but only two. Only two fears. Every single baby has this innate uh, thing inside it. Fear of loud noise, which creates a reflex, and fear of being dropped, okay, where, where it starts to grab onto something. 
everything else, every other fear is acquired. Okay, everything else is acquired. The problem we've got in our situation right now, we have acquired so many fears and most of them are irrational. They're not even real. Some of them are real. A lot of them are just cooked up in our head, in our mind. And this is the way of shaitan. إِنَّمَا ذَلِكُمُ الشَّيْطَانِ يُخَوِّفُ أَوْلِيَاءَهُ فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ That's what Allah tells us. This is shaitan creating. I mean, that, that is shaitan. He will inspire fear of his awliya in you. Don't fear him. Fear me if you're true believers. So, and Imam Ibn Qayyim taught us many centuries ago, that which you fear will come to control you. If you allow yourself to fall into fear of something, anything, that thing will control you. The way of true dignity and liberation is to release yourself from fear of all things except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The three things I wanted to say is um, three steps we can take. And it's very simple. And it all is actually things that you and I can do from now, right now. And it's to do with your mind and your heart. Really. Because that's where the change has to happen. The first thing is we need to inculcate. Create a shift in our thinking. And the shift that we need to create is move away from or build on top of what we already do. Something called altruism. Altruism means what? Brothers, sisters. Selflessness. Selflessness. Being generous. Caring about others. Alhamdulillah, our ummah, mashallah, is a generous ummah. Its characteristic is rahmah and generosity, compassion. Just in one month, Ramadan, we give a hundred million pounds in sadaqah. Just in one month, only from Britain. We are, mashallah, a generous ummah. What we need to do is build on top of that something called heroism. Not just altruism, but heroism. Is it heroic for a person to open up their phone and send off 50 quid to, let's say, a humanitarian charity that's going to give medicine to some people who are dying in Syria. Is that an act of heroism? Don't be brave. Give me the answer. No. Well, okay, depends how much you got. That's a good point. <laughs> well, I would argue even... It's not heroism. Why not? Why isn't it heroism? Is it not heroic? If you see you're going out the street today and you see that there's someone who's fallen over and you help them up and you, you know, help them on their way. Is that heroic? No. Why not? Because you're not risking anything. This is the most important thing. We have developed a culture of being generous and compassionate, but to the exclusion of being courageous. But our ummah, prophethood, sahaba, all of this, their example that we see is one that combines the two. Being selfless and acting out of compassion for others, but in the face of risk, in the face of harm. When these two combine, we're going to begin our way out of this predicament that we see around us. So this is number one uh, thing. I'm going to quote a uh, professor, uh, Philip Zimbardo. He said, uh, heroism is different from altruism. Why, where altruism emphasizes selfless acts that assist others, heroism entails the potential for deeper personal sacrifice. The core of heroism revolves around the individual's commitment to a noble purpose and the willingness to accept the consequences of fighting for that purpose. So this is number one. Secondly, we have to... Let me just summarize that into four points. It's got to be selfless, has to involve some form of potential risk or harm, and three, it, it can be active or passive. That's the other thing. You can do heroic acts passively. There's a brother I met just here in this event. He told me, I'm going to be uh, leaving my job. I said, why? Because that job is not now forcing me to deal with interest. Now, that does take courage because it involves some loss of status and wealth and career prospects and many things. So it's everyday acts of heroism like that that we need to inculcate within ourselves, within our mindset. And the fourth characteristic is it can also, it can be a sudden act. You don't have to Im imagine yourself that I I'm a hero, a superhero, and all I do is save people and rescue them. No, we're all ordinary people. But all of a sudden, an issue will emerge in front of you. Do the right thing. Okay, be brave, be courageous, and do the right thing. 
Don't worry about the consequences. Of course, don't be irrational and naive, but also don't be cowardly. This is not from our, from our religion. So number one is shift the mindset from altruism to heroism. Secondly, shift our role. We heard from Dr. Uthman Latif. We're not like those bystanders of the, of the day of Sabbath that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about. We need to change our role, that we are rescuers, protagonists. We are the heroes of our own story. We keep hearing the society telling us we're aggressors. We keep hearing Muslims we hang around with telling us we're victims. We're neither. You know, we're Muslims with the agenda for change. We have something to give to humanity. We should act from there, from there, from that core belief. So this change, we need to again create. Change the approach, their behavior from one of bystanding to one of intervening based on our moral and ethical principles. And lastly, we need to sh a shift in our approach to social change. Because of some of these mindset issues, our leaders have been uh, promoting a particular approach to social engagement. An approach which is characterized by conforming, complying, and capitulating to society's expectations of the Muslims. This approach has to change because this approach has not given us anything in the last 15 years. So all, it is responsibility of all of us to speak, engage, also take action right now yourself. Whenever you see a proposal or an initiative that is always seeking to keep Muslims disempowered, reject that, advise against it. Speak to the, your local organizations, your masajid, your ulama, your imams, okay, um, to take action. And the, the direction we want to head is one which is based on fortitude, engagement number one, you have to engage, you can't disengage, but based on adhering to our moral principles, having the fortitude to keep to the path and not compromising on our principles and who we are, okay? So we need, to, we need a new political vision. So those are the three things. I feel one of the best verses that, that sums this up is in Surah Ali Imran, وَكَأَيِّ مِن نَبِيٍ قَاتَلَ مَعَهُ رِبِّيُّونَ كَثِيرًا فَمَا وَهَنُوا لِمَا أَصَابَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ There's three things that they're, that they're characterized with. Uh, you know, how many times the prophets, they fought in the way of Allah. And along with them, there were bands of godly men. There were people along with the prophets fighting and supporting them. Uh, in the cause of Islam, in the cause of justice. And Allah says three things about them in, the, in, in that verse. فَمَا وَهَنُوا لِمَا أَصَابَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ They were not demoralized about what befell them in the way of Allah. As you heard from Imam Shakil, things will befall you. But be courageous and be brave. Do acts of heroism. Let those things come and not deter you. So number one is, they are not demoralized in the way, by the, by the things that befell them in the way of Allah. Secondly, وَمَا ضَعْفُ They did not become weak. They did not lose their determination. And thirdly, وَمَا stakanu. They did not relent to the oppressors. When it came to facing off the tyrants, they stood firm. They did not relent. They did not give up. Wallahu yuhibbu sabirin. Allah loves those who have sabr. And this, these three things are the definition of sabr. Sabr is three levels. The sabr of the ordinary people is what we hear in Surah Baqarah. وَلَنَبُلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ And all the rest until the end. The sabr of the leaders who bring change is the one that I mentioned now, this verse. If we want to bring change, you want to change society, take it in a different direction, you have to have this level of sabr. And the sabr of the anbiya, it's something we will not attain. Fasbir kama sabra ulul azmi min al-rusul. We won't reach that, but we aspire. Okay? So may Allah give tawfiq, inshallah, I'm going to finish there. Sorry, I had action points. Uh